This episode of Harvey Brownstone Interviews is brought to you by the Harvey Brownstone Talk Show Blend Coffee, available at hollywoodblends.com. Everyone's saying it's the best coffee they've ever tasted. Why not give it a try and see for yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Harvey Brownstone, and today's special guests are two beloved entertainers who happen to be husband and wife, or as they call themselves, the icon and the leprechaun. (laughs) Starting with the icon first, she's been dazzling us with great performances for over six decades in classic movies like Ride the High Country, Marnie, Marooned, Skyjacked, 1969, Improper Channels, and of course, her many highly acclaimed TV movies, including Mad, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, and Silence of the Heart. On television, she's been in everything from The Twilight Zone, Daniel Boone, Bonanza, Gunsmoke, and The Bob Newhart Show, to Little House on the Prairie, MASH, Murder, She Wrote, NCIS, Grey's Anatomy, and dozens more. She created the unforgettable characters of Dr. Claire Morton on Peyton Place, Sister Mary Daniel on One Life to Live, Liz McVeigh on WIOU, Lorna Scarry in Law and Order SVU, Patricia Clark on 911, and let's not forget that episode of Star Trek where our guest, who played Zarabeth, fulfilled every woman's dream of having her wicked way with Mr. Spock. And for a while in the 80s, she co-hosted NBC's The Today Show, and she also co-hosted The Morning Program on CBS. And we all loved her wonderful, long-running TV documentary series, Wild About Animals. She's been nominated for five Emmy Awards and won an Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series for her work in The Incredible Hulk. And she has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She also wrote an incredibly impactful and emotionally powerful book entitled Breaking the Silence, which is one of the most compelling, insightful, and inspirational celebrity memoirs I've ever read. And at the risk of making her blush even more, I can't resist mentioning this remarkable woman's extraordinary devotion to community service. She's been the national spokesperson for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, which honored her with a humanitarian award. She's also worked tirelessly as an advocate for mental health and with a number of vitally important organizations, including the Center to Prevent Handgun Violence, Sojourn, and Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. And get this, she was named Outstanding Mother of the Year by the National Mother's Day Committee in Washington, D.C. It doesn't get much better than that. And now, moving on to her loving husband, the Leprechaun, he's an actor and producer well-known for his work in the movie Godspell, the miniseries Murder One, Diary of a Serial Killer, and dozens of TV shows including Murphy Brown, Seinfeld, Ally McBeal, Star Trek Voyager, The Brothers Flub, The West Wing, Shameless, The Comeback Kids, and many, many more. And now, these two great talents have joined together in a terrific and very charming movie which they wrote called Our Almost Completely True Story, in which they play themselves, telling the story of how this initially very unlikely couple met and grew to love each other. The movie, which also features veteran stars Tess Harper, Bernie Koppel, Morgan Fairchild and John Rubenstein, has been conquering film festivals everywhere, and it's won nine prestigious awards. Here's the trailer. Okay, you start. Okay. Finding true love in Hollywood has never been easy. Hollywood? Okay, well, the the valley, but still, you get my point. And if you're no longer a young Hollywood starlet, it's almost impossible. But you were a knockout. I were, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the problem is getting rid of the body. Gosh, isn't it always? Even for one of the most beautiful women in the world, oh, thanks. you're welcome. You're Marion Hartley. I know you. You're terrific. Am I coming in? No, I, I don't think so, Ernie. It's Eric. Neither one of you is coming in. Even if she has lots of movie star friends. Uh, she was nominated for an Oscar in 1986. Oh, I was born in 1997. Oh, of course you were. I think he's stalking me. I had a stalker once. Really? How'd you get rid of her? (laughs) Her? I never had a stalker. Would you like mine? And me, I, uh, well, the silver fox. (laughs) 
Okay, give me one good reason why she wouldn't go out with me. She's beautiful. She's famous. Okay, She's... I said one. Let's just say I should probably stick to my voice acting. Can you do a dead on Woody Allen? Can I can, can I do a dead on Woody Allen? Mm -hmm. Let, you know, for a man of my <clears throat> my gender, mm -hmm. you know. But when it comes to my dating life, as Groucho said, I've had a perfectly wonderful evening, and this wasn't it. Who is it? Uh, swordfish. What? Uh, that's the password, swordfish. No, it, it's it's Jerry. I thought you said swordfish. Yeah, I I, I did. Well, why did you say swordfish? Well, it's the Marx Brothers. <laughs> well, some people think they're funny. Well, I... uh, can I get some help over here? But you know what? It can still happen. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, welcome to You Bet Your Boy. If the stars align just right. Hi. Hi. A tall Shiksa Hollywood icon might just fall for a short Jewish leprechaun who does voices. What is on chemo? It's monkfish liver. Monkfish liver? You know, the monkfish lives a monastic life, <laughs> searching in vain for his lost liver. Take it from me. Hi. Get in here. And me. This is our story. Our almost completely true story. What was the name of the little guy of long? Black coat. Myron. Myron? Morgan. Morgan Earp. Oh boy, if it had been Myron Earp or gunfight at the Oive Corral, that uh, you Stop. Know, doesn't play the Stop. same. After seeing this humorous, poignant, and heartwarming movie, I just had to invite our guests on our show. I'm delighted to welcome the movie industry's most adorable power couple. Mariette Hartley and Jerry Soroka. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Wow. Could you read her credits again and then we can go home? <laughs> I only touched the surface, Jerry. I know. <laughs> it's quite a surface you got there. Well, Boy. Mariette, I'd like to start by making it absolutely clear that despite all those Polaroid commercials on television, you were never, in fact, married to James Garner, correct? Correct. Everybody thought we were, but no, no. Well, I want to get right into this movie, our almost completely true story, which I absolutely loved. I'll start with the obvious question, which is what made you decide to write this story? Wow. What didn't? I mean, we we have a terrific relationship and we weren't working. We thought, well, what the heck? I mean, we... We know how to do film. We've done a lot of film over the years, and and let's get going. And 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 we did. And we absolutely loved working together. Is um, it the first time the two of you have written a screenplay together? A screenplay, yes, but not a play. We've done a couple of plays together, but yes, this is well, our first screenplay. So what was it like working together so closely on a project and acting together? Oh, we stayed at separate hotels during yeah. the shooting. Yeah. So, so. that we, we would... <laughs> well, because I'd worked with her before and... It, uh, huh, uh, that's me. Yeah, that's you. It, it was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. And watching her, you know, I just wanted to add a uh, caveat to... Uh, going to use some big words now, Mary. Well, Stay I with love, me. Oh, I love it when you use those Stay big Stay with words. me, babe. <laughs> I had written a movie 10 years ago, and it got very close to being done. And everything, everything happened, 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 and then nothing. And I said, why don't we write something that we can produce and something for us? And we did, and we we got a second mortgage, and Mariette said, though it's not on our house, it's for our neighbors, but they don't know it. No. <laughs> so, so we, you know, we financed it and produced it and wrote it and got it done, and we had so many friends who we could call upon, which we did, and everybody was just oh my God. splendid. It was like a love fest. It really was. We would call people and say, um, we because we were embarrassed in the beginning. It was like, how do you ask people to do a movie that 
and for, for a buck and a quarter. Yeah. Oh, literally. Yeah. I mean, and they all said yes. And some of them said, "Don't, don't, don't send it. Tell me when to show up." I mean, it was like that. And Don Scardino, who directed it, is an old friend of mine. I did Godspell with him back in during the First World War, and he's a love. And his credits are almost as long as. Uh, <laughs> and Don said, "I love it. Let's do it." And it was like we were really surprised. Well, I tell you, the finished product is an absolute joy from beginning to end. Was there something therapeutic for you both in making this movie together? Well, we're still taking all that medicine, so I don't know. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I guess it must have been, you know, to a degree. We, yeah. we, you know, we don't have a lot of secrets from one another, obviously. And I think any relationship, you know, builds. Hi, sweetheart. This is our newest. She, uh, she wasn't in the film. The other cat was. And she's been upset ever since she saw the movie. <laughs> that she's not in it. Oh, well, you, it was quite a family affair, the movie. Your children are in the movie as well, correct? Oh, our children, our grandchildren, and our children, and yes. And even my son, who's <laughs> the, the only thing that you saw of him, and it's too bad, because he's absolutely gorgeous. He was the delivery boy for the flowers. <laughs> oh, that so was it, him. It was only that was his, his arm, arm. yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, what was the biggest challenge for you in making the film? Well, we found that out as we were doing it. I think Jerry's biggest challenge was, yeah, hi. Jerry's biggest challenge I found out when I was watching him do it was the crying scene. Oh, really? He was, yeah, he was, he was very scared about it. And, and luckily Don was wonderful with him. And, you know, I would be able to talk to him too, but yeah, I think that was, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I don't, scared, I, I was unhappy with what I did. Yeah. And it took me a couple of times to watch the film. We have watched it. Some people, you know, like Peter McNichol says he never watches himself. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we watched it because we're the producers and, you know, and, and we, we wanted to, to see a guy showed up, we were shooting here at the house and because we got it cheap and guy walked into the living room and big smile on his face. And I said, who are you? House was full, you know, grips and everybody was here. We were shooting and anyway, it turned out to be Matt Bennett, Don's friend. And we finished shooting the day before COVID really hit. Right. And Matt's people were laid off, his editing people. Matt took the film up to his uh, weekend house up in New York State and edited it by, excuse me, by himself. <laughs> and uh, we were just flabbergasted. Just flabbergasted when we saw the film. So Matt, wow. Matt without Matt, I, 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 I can't even imagine what it would look like. Well, he did an amazing job. I want to tell you what I really loved about the movie. Besides being humorous and heartwarming, the film actually touches on a number of very interesting issues. And I want to touch on some of them, starting with the way that senior veteran actors are treated within the industry. There's a scene with Mariette, Tess Harper, and Morgan Fairchild at an audition. I and couldn't the, wait to write that. And the three of you are treated in such a demeaning and disrespectful way. How realistic was that scene? Oh. Very realistic. I mean, well, I got to tell you, when we had Ruta Lee on the show, she talked about the downright shabby way that stars of her generation are treated in the casting process. And it's, right. I found it quite shocking. And I'm glad you made a point of showing this in your movie. Bravo. Well, thank you. But it, it, there's a funny thing that happens when you're working in a film it's work, it's hard work. And so you can't take a lot of time doing things. And we all knew that. But I, I just love the way that scene was written. I mean, it, it, first of all, the, the girl, 
that played the casting director was so brilliant. We just couldn't believe her. And and we had such respect for her. I don't think she even knew. She was great. And of course, Tess is absolutely to die for. Oh, Tess yeah. Harper, who did she did she win? She, she was won nominated. It. She was nominated. Yeah. So that was a wonderful part that she played. We could and we couldn't find her. No, we, yeah. We had a phone number. We had an email. We couldn't find her. But we, yeah, she's she's a recluse. She absolutely. And is. I said, I said, we got to get tests. Te um, we're writing it for tests. And we were at one of our many doctors, and the elevator door opened, and out walked Tess. You kidding? I, no. no. Those I, are the kind of things that happened all the way through the film. And she wow. said, I told her what we had done, and I said, I'll I'll send you the scene. I'll send you the whole movie. And she said, nah, just tell me when you need me. Unbelievable. That's incredible. And another interesting theme you deal with in the film is the world of dating, including online dating for seniors. Some of the dates you showed us were so <laughs> hilarious. I was laughing out loud. I hope you didn't have to go on a lot of dates like that before you finally met each other. Well, uh, I, I did. I did. Well, you didn't. I did. Online dating? No, this one was on online. Right. It was it was right. a, a person to person. And it was the most de devastating. You dated ones. Edward R. Morrow? <laughs> anyway. That was right after World War One. Yes, right. it was. That's right. But I, I yeah, you know, I looked a little younger. <laughs> but no, there was a, a my first blind date that a supposed friend of mine fixed me up with a lawyer or a doctor or whatever the hell he was in New York City when I was working at, at the morning program. And I thought, well, it, it'll be okay. It'll work. It was the worst date. I mean, it was it was the the date where it, it was Peter McDickle. It was that kind of a date where he said, you know, I'm, I'm gonna I I was going to kill my bet, my, my, how? Oh, no. Oh, oh stop, help me. <laughs> he wasn't there, Mariette. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, Thank you. Well, I'm glad you found each other, but I got to tell you those dating scenes for anybody that's been on dates that they met online, that is so realistic. It was so funny. And if I can get serious for a moment, there's a statement that you made, Mariette, in the movie that I've heard many people say, particularly in our age group, when they meet someone special. And you summed it up perfectly when you said, I don't like becoming so dependent on someone after having lived so well on my own for 10 years. Yeah. Where do you think that fear of giving in to a relationship came from? <laughs> my whole life. I mean, I, I've always kind of nipped it at relationships that that just scared me at times that, that I would become totally dependent on someone. And I think partially that came from my upbringing, which was not a safe place, uh, or I never felt it was that safe. And I kind of had to create this inner life of my own. And I think that's the joy of our lives together. That I mean, that was a very true moment in the film and the great thing about that 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 scene, we really didn't know how it was going to turn out. At least I didn't. I mean, you probably did. I didn't. It was. I felt like I was in water, up to up to my neck. I didn't. You know, it it just felt very. I felt very alone in that scene. Well, it really showed. It really showed and it really, really resonated because you captured a feeling many people have. And of course, there's another thing that's very clear from the movie. Jerry, you are a very persistent, patient, attentive oh. man who oh does God. not easily take no for an answer. And you really pursued Mariette. What yeah. made you so sure so early on that she was 100% right for you? You're going to have to be honest. You mean in the in the real life or in the movie? In real life, because this is almost the true story. Yeah, yes, almost. 
By the way, they have changed the title. Our, our lovely uh, uh, distributor talked to us early on. They said, your title is too long. You have to you have to shorten it. So we called our kids who are smarter than we are. And we said, we About need to, everything. We need to, you know, and, and my son came up with a great title called. Look at that. Yeah. Good titles. One word titles. And we sent him, we sent him six at a time, right? And a week He's later. very good about that, too. A week later, they came back and they said, we've got it. I said, oh, great. Which one? And they said, we've added the word love before story. I said, wait, now it's our complete, our almost completely true love story. I said, so our, your definition of short and my definition of short, a little different. <laughs> so wait a minute. What was the, wait. There was well, I really wanted to know why you were so sure that Mariette was right for you when she did nothing to encourage you in the beginning. Or, or toward the end. I mean, I, I, th I look at the film and I think, I was awful to him. I really was. Well, you weren't awful, but you did have a wall around you so thick that most men, particularly yeah. attractive, funny, intelligent, hot guys like Jerry would have walked away. Yeah. yeah. Did she call me hot? Hot. I called you hot. Yeah. You have an incredible charm. Your magnetism on that screen, Jerry, is unbelievable. You're an amazing impressionist. Tell me if I got this right. I believe I detected Jack Benny, George Burns, W.C. Fields, Ed Sullivan, Groucho Marx, Michael Caine, Walter Brennan, Peter Lorre, and I think Jimmy Cagney, right? Oh, yes. And Woody Allen. You're unbelievable. Thank Have you, you heard, uh, do, do your Woody Allen. He, what are you talking, he saw the movie. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and do impressions for an hour, because I, you know, I got other things to do. <laughs> yeah, but when are you gonna do Woody Allen? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. And, and speaking of the comedy in the movie, there's even a funny bird in the movie that has quite the vocabulary. Was that really Roseanne Barr's bird? No. <laughs> no, but it had been picking up on some bird in the, in the store that sounded like Roseanne Barr. Bird. By the way, that oh. that that bird and the bird store is my best friend, Lloyd, who owns that bird store, Birds Plus. And again, I walked into the store and I and the birds are just this like, oh my God. And I said, Lloyd, look, I did Godspell with Lloyd also way back. And I said, hey, Lloydie, can you shoot in here? Lloydie? Yeah. Oh. Can, can you shoot in here? He said, yeah, well, they did a commercial in here. Too. I said, what do you do with the birds? He said, I put them in the back room and shut the door. I said, all of them? I mean, it's a big place. <laughs> he said, yeah, no, just the squawkers. I said, okay, we're going to shoot a movie in here, and you're going to be in it, but you're going to play a guy who owns a bird store, and the guy's <laughs> name is Lloyd. <laughs> what do you think? Can you handle it? He said, <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I said, we're going to pay you double what i'm thinking nothing 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 <laughs> but i gotta tell you uh, marietta am i right i don't think jerry has a big ego he's just he's not an ego guy no he's not he's so comfortable with himself right that you the fact that you were not encouraging him and you were really you know giving him the brush off in the beginning it didn't phase him because he has this confidence in himself. Right. I found it completely captivating. I've watched the movie with several friends. They all want to know if Jerry has a brother or a clone. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, Mariette, there's another question I have to ask you. There's a scene where you have to deal with an obnoxious fan at an autograph show. How often do you have to put up with people like that? I, I, it, I've had my share. You know, I really have. Because I do, I do those shows, and and people really behave like that. Which one are you talking? Are you talking about, about Stu Penkin? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Stu! Oh my God! I had worked with Stewie twice, Stu Penkin, and I knew his. So I mean, he took liberties, but I had such fun writing a scene for Stu again because he was in a play of mine we did together for nine months. And he is one of the funniest men in the world. 
And, well, that uh, scene, you know, I think everyone watching that scene is going to try to behave better if they have the good fortune to meet somebody you've idolized. Behave a little more respectfully when you finally meet the celebrity. I had to learn how to do it. <laughs> okay. What do you mean? Well, before I started this show, I was a criminal court judge. And oh, no. I was I was a huge, huge fan of people like you. And I would have been equally obnoxious. But now I've learned to behave myself. <laughs> now, I want to get serious again for a moment. Mariette, you've been a very prominent public voice of support and raising awareness for people living with the trauma of having had a loved one commit suicide. You dealt with this in a frank and very powerful way in your book entitled Breaking the Silence, which I highly recommend to all our viewers. How important was it to you personally that this issue makes it into the movie? Because it did. Oh, uh, Jerry, I'll tell you that. I mean, uh, it was very important for me because I had no idea we were going to do another movie together or another movie together. And this issue is so deeply important to me. And now that we've lived together as long as we have, Jerry knows why, people don't think about it. No, you know, let's say on, on the 4th of July, he can tell you what happens to me because dad, my dad died because of gunshot, as, as you know. Yes. And I still have terrible, terrible post-traumatic stress syndrome. On, on the 4th of July, I have to hide in a corner when the, you know, the things go off. And I think it is such an important, it's, and it's worse than it was before. All of this is, is terrible. The gun thing is just horrible. It is horrible. I, I remember reading something you said that really resonated with me. You said, I have learned that one's deepest wounds integrated become one's greatest power. I want to tell you, Mariette and Jerry, just how correct you are. And then you'll understand why it means the world to me to have you on our show. Now, I hope I get through this, what I want to say to you. Very briefly, when I was 19 years old, back in 1975, I told my parents I was gay and they immediately kicked me out. And oh, I spent please. the next five years in an extremely difficult situation trying to get myself through university and law school, which I did. But one night when I was 20 and really feeling very depressed and feeling very lonely and unloved, I made the decision to commit suicide. And because of a rather bizarre thing that happened when I called the suicide prevention hotline, I didn't do it. And I thank God every day that I found the strength to keep going. And I went on to be a successful lawyer and a prominent judge here in Canada for 26 years, and I've had a happy life. But Mariette, your comment about how our emotional trauma and our wounded hearts become our strongest power really exemplify who I am. And I want to thank you from my heart for all you do to help people heal and for the cause of suicide prevention. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm so glad you're here. I have a dear friend called Dolores Hart, who I think I mentioned in the book. She, she was an actress, and then she got smart, and she became a nun. And Wasn't she in a movie with Elvis? Yes, she was the first person to kiss Elvis on screen. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. But she, I, I would go and, and have, a, what I say this, well, meetings with her uh, up at the uh, nunnery, or the monastery, it really was. I never understood what she said to me. But I came away from the place cleansed that every time I would go and w one time she she gave me that line one's deepest wounds integrated become one's greatest power and I got it yeah I mean it's like yes absolutely yes and and we're I, now I'll be like on a set or I'll be talking to a girl oh, I know it just happened recently sweet girl was not feeling well. Oh, she was a, a, a policeman's girlfriend. 
uh, physical therapy. I was doing physical therapy. And she, I, I knew something was going on, but I was given this gift, which I am so thrilled about. Thank you again for saying, I, and I said to her, she started talking about it. I think what happened as a result of all of the, all of the work I've done with grief work and in groups and with, with children, with whoever, it, it's made me very, very open to healing because of, of when we talk. And she was doing my physical therapy. She told me the story about her mm -hmm. boyfriend. And it's it's absolutely, it was, there was a policeman who was shot and killed about two, two weeks away. And I feel that so strongly. And I said to her, please talk about this, please. It is so essential that you get this off of your soul because it's essential. It's just essential. It is. And I'm sorry your book wasn't around back when I was feeling that way. But I've got to tell you, I have such respect for the way you expressed yourself, the way that you pay it forward and help other people. I love that you put it in the movie. Now I got myself all for clamped. Let me tell our viewers. You can learn more about Mariette Hartley and Jerry Sroka's new movie by going to the official website, ouralmostcompletelytruestory.com. December 8th, it opens. December the 8th is the date the movie opens. I highly recommend this film. I hope everyone will watch it. So Mariette and Jerry, I have only one more question for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not pregnant. No, but are you ready for the question? Okay. <laughs> I've really got to know this. Is dried chicken really an aphrodisiac? Yes. <laughs> yes, obviously. That's a wonderful question. It wasn't dry. <laughs> he just had not learned how to cook it yet. Your mother never taught you how to roast a chicken? A chicken. It, it, was, it was pieces. <laughs> it wasn't a, a whole chicken. That was the first problem. Well, I got to tell you, Jerry and Mariette, I've loved every moment of our time together. Thank you so much for making this delightful movie. I thank you both with all my heart for taking the time to go appear on our show. Our very special guests have been Mariette Hartley and Jerry Soroka, whose brand new multi-award winning film, Our Almost Completely True Story, will be released on December the 8th. So look for it on your favorite movie streaming device. Take it from me. Do not miss this movie. It will definitely touch your heart. My name is Harvey Brownstone. Thank you to my producer, Steve Silver, my director of programming, Deborah Batsafin, my production assistant, Rosa Puzo, and my entire team at the XPTV1 network in the UK. Thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the great interviews on the Harvey Brownstone Interviews YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are posted.